Okay, I'm going to start to record the session and say hello again. How are you? Hi. Hi. Um, uh, there's some people that write me about the project. Um, there are some of the options uh, are related to the Mar Marcus Triska webpage, uh, one of the puzzles. And today, if you don't have other questions, I want to show you some exercise. Probably, uh, I think will be a good idea to try to resolve uh, the Sudoku, for example, to see the implementation. I want to explain to you how to resolve the Sudoku in the way that Marcus, uh, Marcus Triska did. It's a little bit different. How he used some um, special things that we don't use in this, uh, this semester, but it's easy to understand, I think for you, I hope for you, okay? So th this is the idea, I try to resolve this Sudoku and explain what is the new things we, we, we have to know to resolve, okay? I'm gonna share my screen. Um, okay, I'm sorry because I have many open windows here today because I was, uh, okay, the first thing, we're going to see is the Marcus Triska webpage, but for that what you find Marcus Triska. This is the homepage. This is the aspect. Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. Here they they talk about the power of prolog, a lot of information. He has also um, a YouTube channels with some explanation about uh, some exercise in English. Uh, many information here. Um, he, for example, resolved different exercises some classics in computer science, artificial intelligence exercise like N Queens or Sudoku are here in this list. Um, another escape from Surd. Um, in some puzzles too, probably. Connect four is the classic classic game here too. And uh, for example, let's go to to take a look to the Sudoku implementation. Here you have a video, YouTube video with some explanations. And this is the code. Look at this code, it's so simple. Yeah, only a few lines. Uh, if, if we take a look of the solution for the Sudoku in the 99 prolog problems, uh, here, here you have, we have also, uh, a solution for a nine by nine matrix of Sudoku. And here, if we click here, you have the solution. You have to download first the file. Um, here, you have the file.
this is the solution for the same problem in other way. Look at this code is lot of lines and elements we don't see before like this one that is called cut and we don't use it because because these type of elements are changing the philosophy of uh, declarative programming in a certain way because when you use this this element you are telling to product okay if you find a solution don't try to find more and when when you use this element in our programs now it's very important the order of these lines so far we don't pay attention about the order of the lines we, we can write our code in any order but but if we use this type of elements we are broken the philosophy general philosophy of declarative programming because at now we need uh, to put this line before and this line this line uh, after so we don't we never use this we use this element in our code look at this code here another could here another could and take a look to this code i don't know 200 200 or more <gasps> 300 lines code to resolve because that are examples probably we don't need all, all these examples but 236 lines and with this uh with the other example we get exactly the same Oh, that will be possible <laughs> to have the same result with these lines and with these 236 lines. What do you think? What do you prefer? What do you prefer? Laura, what do you think? I would prefer the short one, but I think <laughs> if I would program it, maybe it would be longer because <laughs> I don't but know. That's crazy. <laughs> that 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 not only the the question for the the two hundred lines. That type of elements I don't like because this uh, broken the philosophy of leave the computer do things to 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 use this element you have to imagine what is the like the tree with options because you are cutting options with this element so i don't like that right i don't like that and when last year we we, we i had the opportunity to, to talk with marcus triska we have uh, some video, video conferences um i asked to him if if he use could this type of element say no we never use it and if you take a look to the code he never use these elements because are 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 against the philosophy of declarative programming from in my point of view so i don't like that do you will find this type of element with I, I'm not I'm not going to explain how that works. We don't have, don't have time to, to to if you you if you want you can look for bibliography about that the good element uh, in Prolog you can find there are a, a very good um, a good book is from Ivan Bratko. I'm gonna give you in the in the video the link to this book. With information you, where you can find information about the code, but we are not going to use this uh, this type of element. Okay, so let's go to try to understand how this code works. Okay, I'm going I'm going I'm gonna try to 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 explain everything you need to try to understand this code. Okay, 
Perfect. Everyone knows how uh, Sudoku's works or not? Sudoku is a type of exercise or type of problem where, it, for example, let, let's talk, put the focus in nine by nine uh, matrix. Uh, you have to, or we have to, um, put the uh, nine numbers uh, by lines, rows, and columns. We have uh, three restrictions. The first one is for each line of this matrix, uh, we have all elements from one to nine, only once, not repeating any of these numbers. Here, for example, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If we take the next line, happens exactly the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that happens in any single line. We have all the, L the numbers from one to nine, in this case, because it's nine by nine matrix. And we have all the elements with no repetition, okay? That happens in rows and that happens also in columns. If we take this column, we have nine, six, as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, in nine, the first column. The second column, exactly the same. One, two, three, four, five, uh six seven eight nine and the same for all the columns and in these blocks we have three or nine different blocks in this nine by nine matrix in each block happen exactly the same we have all the elements from one to nine only once here one two three four five six seven, eight, and nine. Exactly the same happens in the next block. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the same for all blocks. So this is the idea. We have a matrix. You can find different sites of Sudokus. In this case, we are going to resolve a nine by nine Sudoku. And the restriction are different elements by rows, different elements by columns, and different elements by blocks. Any question about that? Everyone knows. Okay, perfect. So um, to understand the, the, sorry, to understand this uh, solution, we have to know about what that means, CLP set constraints. I'm going to try to explain to you how, what that means. And it's, that is very interesting idea to resolve many, many problems in Prolog. Uh, for that, let's go to change from this page. And let's go to this. Uh, uh, sorry, here, here down. Power of Prolog link, okay? Let's go to access to this link, Prolog, Power of Prolog. And here there are many chapters, but now we are going to see this chapter nine. It's called interior arithmetic. This is the, the, the element we, we're going to see now. Here, in interior arithmetic, explain uh, what is the idea of this uh, library. Um, okay, the idea, uh, most important idea we have here, constraints. 
we're going because uh, you know that prologue it uh, will try to to in, in the way to resolve any problem prologue will explore any possible option so it's very important to cut or, or to give um, a prologue and a space of search um, lim limited or only restricted to um, to the possible options and we are going to try to uh, cut the uh, options that we know we don't have any options to get the solution okay this is the idea try to reduce the number of options where prologue will try to search the solution okay um We have a new operator to do that. Is this equal uh, has this hashtag an equal? And let's go to see how that works. We are a group of arithmetic operators like is equal, is less than, greater than, or not equal. With this group of elements, we can uh, work with these constraints. Let's go to see some examples, okay? With how this works. Um, if you want to do that with Prolog, we need to use a library because it's, this library of CL pests, sorry, uh, library. CLP set or CLP F C uh, F D. Um, give me one second because probably if you want to text to check these exercises with me, I have to explain how you can install this library. Um, uh, give me one second. Let's go to give me two minutes because I, I'm going to, to search for this library for you. And I'm going to explain if you want to install in your computer, what you can do, okay? I'm gonna cut this uh, the record. Let's go to do together. So the first thing we have to do now is go to this link in GitHub and uh, download this file, clpset.zip. Download file here and save in your computer. And after that, I'm gonna tell you where we, are, we have to put this file and compress this file, okay? First, sa save this file in your computer. And after that, uh, for example, here, downloads, okay? And after that, we have to access to your Prolog installation. Could you um, put the link in the chat, please? Okay. Thank you. Uh, give this one. Um, one second. Okay. Here. Yeah. All right. Here, big. This is the this is the place. This is the link. So in this link we have to you have to access to take this file. CLP set CLP uh, dot zip, 
and download it. And after that, we have to check where we have installed the SWY prolog. And for that for example, if you write here prolog windows, uh, we click here in abrir, open um, file location or something like that in English or abrir ubicación del archivo here. And that will give uh, us this link, this file. If we click here, right with the bottom, right button of the mouse and go to properties, this is the, this is the space or this is the directory where we have installed Prolog. In my case is program files, S W I P L. If I copy this this uh, directory name and paste here, we can access to the directory where Prolog are installed. And after that, we have to access to library folder library folder and paste here the file we just download. I have here this file already CLP and here you have to extract, extract to CLP and we, when we do that, this process of extraction, we will uh, find a new folder here called CLP with the full, the follow um, files, all these um, files. I already have an, or, um, a file with CLP in my library. Can I just um, delete it or? <laughs> you, have a, you have already? Yes. Yeah, you. me too. Okay, what, what, do, what do you have inside? Uh, wait, I have to look. There are a lot of files like CLPQ, CLPQR, CLPR, and okay. a okay. few prologue. Okay, what we need is this library. Try to check if you have this library. If you have uh, this one, CLP FD. I have a file called CLP FD. So when I have this, then it's all right. Okay, let's go to try. Let's go to try if this works without um, without adding this uh, file, okay? Probably the last version include, uh, also included this library. So let's go to create a new file. I'm gonna share, send you this uh, in chat. Let's go to create a new file, including this line at the beginning. Use module library CLP FD. Uh, for example, we can save this file as save as um, for example, for us, we have here. CLP, or for example, my sudoku.pl, okay? My sudoku. And after that, we can open this file with prolog. 
the file consult and here open my sudoku if everything is okay we can uh, we can check if that works using for example x three plus five. And we have, if we have a result here, that means we have the library. Yes, so I have the library. Okay, perfect. So you, you don't need to install, probably the last version, last pro version included the library. Okay, don't worry how to install. You don't need to install because the, uh, the library is already included, okay? Perfect, let's go to continue. So we have prepared the system for make this type of arithmetics. And let's go to take a look, continue with this uh, Marcus Triska page. And let's go to see the most important elements here. Um, for example, that is interesting this exercise because uh, usually it's not possible to do that. This is the least length. In this case, we always put this arithmetic operation after the, this line, the recursion, because operator is need this value before uh, obtain the result. But here, a change in the order, are, it is possible now put this arithmetic operation before. And it's easy to, to copy this exercise and see how that goes. But we are not to, to do that. I prefer to take a look to this part, domains. What, what, we, are, what we are going to do with it prolog? with this domain. We're going to specify for variables what is the domain um, we can uh, put values for one variable. And that is very important because after that, Prolog are going to check only values in this domain and not outside this domain. Let's go to take uh, to do some examples here and see how that works. For example, we can do this one is in zero two. That means Prolog say, okay, this variable uh, take values in the domain the zero dot dot two. So this variable can take values zero, one, or two. And we can do also, or for example, the next one can say, okay, this is, this is the domain. Uh, this variable can, value will be three, will be equal to three and probably say that's false. It's not possible because the value three is outside the domain of this variable. And this is very, very interesting because Prolog, uh, we are telling to Prolog what is the, the options for search. More examples. In case to say, can say equal to one, we'll say, okay, that is possible. That is possible, this variable, unify with one. And what happened if, if we are using more than one variable? For example, x in zero, one, two, y in zero, two, And for example, set is equal to X 
That's why. If that is very interesting to, to realize that um, Prolog or this library uh, in automatic way create the domain for this variable using this arithmetics. Let's say set in the range of the domain of zero dot dot four. That is very interesting because after that, we, we are telling to Prolog that they only have to search in these value, values, one, two, three, or four, and not out, outside this domain. So in automatic way with this arithmetic operation, we are working with domains. And we also can do with this other, you know, this other way, say ins uh, zero two. And it's a way to, to do the same with, with variables inside a list. In this case, x is in domain zero dot zero two two, and y is in domain zero two two also. And you can say here set, for example, q by x and say set is in domain zero dot dot four because these operations are changing or are giving the domain for this variable. Just five the domain for set will be zero to 10. Okay, any question about that? Do you, do you understand the, the idea of the mind? Okay, more things. So these two elements in is, are very important to tell what is the domain for variables. Next one, labeling. It's going to, to give values to uh, these um, domains. For example, x is in domain one, two. And we can say in domain, in domain x. And this, uh, this predicate will give us all the, the, the options for this variable. All values, possible val, 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 uh, values for this variable in the domain of a, a, x, the variable. Or we can use this other way, x, y, things zero to two, and we can say label x, y. I'm giving all the options for these two variables will be x and y zero, x zero, y one, zero two, one zero, one one, one two, two zero, and two two. And all the different options for this pair of variables. Okay, another interesting uh, predicate or group of predicates are map lists, but we are going to see that later. It is very interesting, and um, uh, Marcus used this this element frequently to resolve this uh, to resolve, sorry, to resolve many, many exercises. Let's go to see how later, how that works. Um, here, we're going to use that later 
you can see this element in the code. Let's go to see that later. And here we have more examples of constraints propagation because Prolog can automatic, in an automatic way, propagate these con uh, constraints. Here you have more examples of propagation. Um, okay, I think that is enough for this part. And let's go to see another element. Um, uh, sorry, one second. Okay, let's go to see how map map uh, map list work. This is another element that that Marcus used in this resolution of Sudoku. Um, the map list here. Let's go to see how that works with some examples. The idea of map list is to apply a goal. For example, one goal will be is equal to one. And we are going to use in this way because uh, usually this operator, usually you, you can find this operator of, of um, unify in this way, x unify with one. This is this one. But it's possible also to write in this way, equal one or unify x, x and one. Let's go to check if that works here, it's like, Unify x one and plus say yeah that is true it's the same that write x unify with one but in this case for map list we uh, uh, would be best to use this this type of representation map list equal to one. And here we have a list of elements. And that will be true if that will be true if it's possible to apply this goal to all elements of the list and say and with success. So if we do that, it's equal to one, a list will say. That is false because that is not true. But if I write here one, two, three, or three times three, three times one, Pollock say that is true because it's possible to apply this goal to all elements here, and uh, and it, that is true. And it, we have here three variables. Three variables. What happened after that is that we unify all these variables to number one with map list. So apply the goal here with all elements in list. In the resolution of the Sudoku, Marcus. Let's go to check that here. Let's go to see how Marcus use this uh, map list.
going to change the name, my Sudoku. And the first thing that the resolution do is say that the length of the rows, this variable called rows, is nine. So first thing you say, okay, length the length of uh, rows is nine. What happened after that is if the, the variable is, is free, what happened is create a list with nine variables. Remember that is the, the way that Prolog um, call the variable with this underscore and a number. This is a name of variable, another one, are different variables here. Okay, so this is the first part. And it's interesting that to check if we have here a list with elements that also works because here, B, C, D, or whatever matrix here with nine elements, also works, not only creating, also simple check if the, the matrix here are nine, half inside nine elements. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And plus say, okay, that is true. Any question? It's clear? So far, not. Yes. Okay. So first part is can check that rows have nine, nine elements. Next one, map list. Use this predicate, the same length. Let's go to see how same length works. It's a very simple predicate. Same length. It's like to see, okay, up these two lists have the same, sorry, same length. Uh, one, two, three. And here, uh, one, two, three, for example. I would say that is true. Both lists have the same length. It's not, you can put different elements here and both say that is true. But what happened if here I have three variables? Sorry. What, ha what happened if I use this same, same length inside a map list? Same length. Um, let's have, for example, one, two, three, one, two, three. And here we have three variables, for example. What happened is applying this predicate to these uh, three variables. Oh, I'm sorry. Same length here, parentheses. Okay, what happened here is uh, we obtain three lists with the same length of this one. So this is the way Marcus create a nine by nine matrix. Say. Okay, the first one have nine, nine elements. And after that say, okay, give me uh, 
for each variable here, one list of nine. Let's go to C with, for example, with three. It does say, okay, if I have here three, one element of three, sorry, let's go to some, for example, length, length, uh, rows, the three, three elements. And after that, map list, rows, sorry, same length, rows, rows. What happened here, we have a list of three, it's like a matrix, three list with exactly three elements. And it's very interesting to see that if I have here one matrix with three by three also works. It's not all, not for creating, also for check if that works. If we have exactly three by three or a matrix by three by three elements, as a product say, that's true. Okay. So here create a um, first part of the matrix, and this is to create the second part. It's a nine by nine matrix with it, this map list. Next part, next part of this code. Any questions so far? Any question here? about these two elements. Any question? Yes, no, you understand? I just sleep in. I don't have questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one, next one. Let's go to see next one. Next one, uh, what, uh, what we are going to do here is tell all the variables and say, okay, all these variables, the domain is one, two, nine. So it's like length, First part is length. Uh, the rows is nine. After that, with map list, we create uh, same length um, rows. Rows. What we do here, because inside this variable we are nine elements. And what we do here is create, create or check, it depends. Create or check a nine by nine matrix. And next one is, we use this append with these rows in, for example, S and say if S in range zero zero nine oh, sorry one nine. What we do is uh, with this part. Uh, sorry, um, ins because this is a list of variables. It's ins. And now, after that, we have all the variables are nine 
by nine variables in the domain of one to nine. That is the domain for this problem to resolve the Sudoku. What is the length of this variable? The if s eighty one nine by nine is eighty one eighty one variables. Okay. Next element. Next element is to say to apply the predicate all these things. Let's go to see how all these things works. You can say, for example, all these things elements in the list are all these things to say that's true if there are some repeat elements let's say that it's false so with all these things element in a list we are checking that all elements in this list are not equal so that is uh, what exactly we need to resolve the sudoku we need by these elements for all the lines, for all the rows in this matrix, we need all the elements in this matrix are these things. So here the idea is map list all these things. Uh, we can do one more simple example. For example, here say with two lists, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Are all these things, say, yes, it's true. Map list, without map list. Okay, say it's true. If there are some elements that are not these things in any list, at that would be false. Yeah, for example, we'll check for every single list inside this list, we'll check if are all these things or not. Say that is true. If here I write another one, so that's false or in other way. So the idea of this map list of all these things is check if all the elements in all the rows in the, the nine rows are all these these things. So far. And the next one is this transpose matrix change files by rows. So the idea of transpose, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine. What we get here is we change uh, rows by files. So one four seven will be the first column, two five eight second column and three. So we transpose, we prepare to check if the Sudoku is different for all columns in the matrix. And next element is check if are all these things for these columns. Okay, any questions so far?
Is everything okay? Are you happy? Are you happy or not? Are you happy? Yes. You're happy. <laughs> okay. So, so far with that. First, check if the matrix have nine rows. Second part, check if all elements inside are exactly nine elements. The next part is um say that the domain for all the var all all these um uh, variables are from one to nine all elements in the matrix the domain are from one to nine next element is check that if all element is for rows are different we transpose the rows to columns and check also all the elements are distinct for columns. Next one, very interesting. What, what Marcus do here is take all the rows with a variable, inside the variable. What is the idea here? The idea here is make blocks to check if each block have also different um, distinct elements. So first we take the blocks um, and here make like three, it's like we have, we have here, Three lines, it's like A, uh, B, C, sorry, A, B, C, D, E, F, H. And uh, this is a row, each variable have a row for with nine elements. Nine of the same for, for all variables, each variable. So at the end, we have here three different, it's like three different CD. three different groups of, of three. And here we have a block. Here we have a block. Uh, and here we have another block and so on. Exactly the same here. We have nine blocks, three by three. So we have to do now is check if each of these blocks are also values, different values from one to nine. Uh, for this part, Marcus creates a predicate uh, using induction. So this is the idea. We, we take for H3 lines, we, we have three blocks. And the idea is check if all these blocks, this block and this block and this block are distinct elements. And here we use induction. Let's go to check. Let's go to create these distinct blocks predicate. 
the idea of these distinct blocks, I'm gonna create again from zero, will be distinct blocks. Uh, we receive um, three, three lists, this one, this three, this two, and this three. And what we have to do, that will be true. Uh, it is true if three, uh, three blocks, if blocks uh, that create the uh, rows are or have these thin elements. And here, for example, will be an example of the blocks um, Here we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, one, seven, eight, nine. I'm the same here. One, two, three, four, five. Six. This is the idea. Something like that. We are looking for different elements in the three blocks. How we can create that? Using induction, these things blocks. Uh, what happens if the empty list solution? Can you try to resolve this uh, by yourself? Try to think about that. Try to give you a solution for this predicate. Try to check, to check if um, you have the solution there, you can take a look to the solution, but it would, would be better if you don't take a look to this solution and try to do by yourself. Take some, take some time, five minutes to think about that, okay? Try to create by yourself this predicate of a way to check, uh, this is, sorry, or one, or two, or three. Three lines or three rows, and with these three lines, block or rows, we create three blocks. And we have to check if all elements of each block are these things. Five minutes to think about that. Okay. Okay. Five minutes and see you in five minutes. Are you there or not? Yep. Yeah. And what do you think? Would it be possible to do by yourself or not? Well, we can try. Okay. <laughs> try, try. Two, three minutes. Three minutes more. And resolve that, okay? See you in three minutes. Do you have any solution or approach? Hello, hello, hola, hola, are you there? I, um, I did something, but then I, I didn't know how to fulfill it, but I did look at the solution. So 
I have, <laughs> I have it, but I looked at the solution at the end because I didn't know. Okay. Um, can you share your screen? Yes, I can, but it's the same as uh, the solution because I copied. Okay. You did some, okay. Let's okay. Let's go. I'm gonna uh, explain the solution is is or do with you. The idea is, I have to take three blocks. Okay. Let's go to use induction. First part of induction. What happened with empty list? If I don't have any element, I can say. Okay. I have empty list. I can say okay. There are these things. This is our more simple case. And what we are going to do is try to take blocks in a um, recursive way, like this thin blocks. Now here, I, I, I have to take the three, three first elements of each list. So, I can, for example, say here element one, element two, element three for the first list and the tail one. And the same for the second list. Uh, in this case, element four, element five, element six, and the tail two. And the same for element uh, seven, element eight, element nine. I'm and sorry, you wrote an R instead of an E in the second block. Okay. Okay, thank you, thank you. A1, A2, ta -ta -ta, E3, E4, E5, E6, E7, E8, and nine. okay, perfect. So, how we can check if all of these elements are distinct? Well, let's say all distinct and, and all distinct element one, element two, element three. And four and five and then six and seven and then eight and then nine. Okay. Okay, the, the, we need this all this block have elements, different elements. And what happened with the tail? Let's go to to check this thing block. Blocks. Um, sorry, blocks. Oh, the tail, tail one, tail two, and tail three. If that is true, if all, all elements are distinct in the in the the tails, and this block are distinct, if that is true, that means that, that block and that block are distinct. And all, all these things in this block, that means the three blocks are different. Elements of oh, these three blocks are different. So, any question about that? Any question? I don't have. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for answer. So we finish. That's all. We check only with these three lines. We create for each three lines. We create three blocks. We check that three blocks are the same. These three blocks and these three blocks. And at the same time. You remember all the things have to be true at the same time. So are 
these things in rows are these things in columns are are these things in all the nine blocks okay nice let's go to check if that works uh, for that we have we need a line here is this one because we have to label put labels in the in elements in rows and this one we also need because it's like I take a look for this predicate it's like um uh, portray the current output stream so we need that okay I'm going to use that to resolve first uh, let's go to take to open load this my sudoku my sudoku check if are any error this thing uh for example my sudoku okay everything is um this thing blocks Okay, so now, uh, sorry, we have to put my Sudoku, Sudoku, the solution, uh, map list, level, I need all labels for for each row and map list, map list portray Laos. Uh, the uh, solution. Okay. That's all. My Sudoku, we had the map list of the labels, labels of all the, the rows and the portrait close for all the rows. And here we have a solution. We have a, a solution a matrix with all the restrictions. Here we have different elements in rows, different elements in columns and different elements in blocks here one two three four five six seven eight nine here one two three four five six six seven eight nine and so on okay are you happy and we can ask for more if i write this dot and comma I can get many, 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 many different sudokus. How I can resolve a sudoku that have some empty spaces, for example, we have here a solution. This one. Uh, well, let me see. We can, for example, copy one of this one, for example, this one, um, a second. Oh, pop, pop. This one, for example, and we can create here a Sudoku. And say, for example, Sudoku one and uh, uh, S, for example, S unify with this list of lists. 
Und hier Komma, 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 Komma. And finish. So here the idea is you can leave some empty space. You can say like usual you can find and Sudoku with empty spaces in some elements da, da, da. and what you want is resolve the Sudoku filling all these spaces. Example. Um, whatever. Save and Sudoku. But what we can what we can do here is make and say before Sudoku one s and now we have this we, we want to resolve one specific sudoku no not generate one randomly and here we have the solution we have the sudoku with these empty spaces and now filled with everything this is spaces i can put more more free spaces, and at the end, I get a solution. If you want to, to resolve any Sudoku you find in any place, you only have to, to write the Sudoku in this, in this way with the empty spaces and give the, the this Sudoku to Prolog, and Prolog will give you the solution. Okay. And we can, for example, also check the time. The time is needed to finish. If we put the Sudoku between time, parentheses, and time, we can get the time is finished in 0 0.004 seconds. Um, that's all. Any question? Something you had to say? And look at the difference between the code. It's this code uh, is very, it's 100% declarative, very simple, smart, we are only describing the restriction for for Sudoku and um, Prolog will resolve with this library using this powerful system of domains. Because if we don't use that domains, it will be very, very difficult to resolve. We need more, more and more, more time to resolve. So the use of this library for these exercises are very important. Um, there are someone who asked me how to resolve, for example, for the project, if it will be possible to use uh, another exercise, for example, the puzzle. And you, here you can resolve this puzzle in a very similar way. Right. You use a similar implementation using this operator, assigning numbers to options. And it's very similar, the way to resolve. And for example, I remember another one, Zebra, Zebra puzzle. 
Logic puzzles. And here, the idea is use this uh, this uh, library and assign assign um, numbers to options and leave the leave product to resolve. Parametric puzzle, several puzzle. This is a very popular one. Uh, here the idea is use this arithmetic and assign a number for any option. And with this arithmetic product we've resolved in a very easy way. Okay. More questions, any question? I have several questions regarding final project. Okay. Tell me. Um, I don't understand what's the point to take these examples from those 99 problems if they are already solved. Can we take them? Yeah, the idea is not to take uh, into account the solution because sometimes the solution are, I don't know, are using elements that we don't use, like this code or the idea is try to do by yourself. Like to resolve by yourself. Um, I know it's very easy to take to copy the solution and say, okay, this is a copy, but at least you have to understand because, for example, in this case of this uh, Sudoku, I have the solution, but it's not easy to understand how that works. It's interesting to take, okay, take line by line and try to understand how that works. Okay, and you need us to write those explanations, yes, how we solve it. Yeah, and yeah, that's, we... that is the most important thing because uh, if you take copy the solution you, with any explanation, that it makes no sense. And can we write those explanations in notes like we did during classes or we need to make another separate file document? Um, will be good to, to use if you need an, a separate document, like to put some graphics if you need, or will be, will be good if you put your, at, at, for example, here, here we always, write explanation here inside the code. For example, uh, this one, it is true, but sometimes you need to explain something more. You can write a document and put some graphics to, to be more clear this explanation. So it will be perfect if you use a, a separate document. But at the, at the same time, the code have to include this type of explanation with some example, or, okay. Okay, and how long this document should be, or it doesn't matter? Doesn't matter. And the most important thing is you understand what the, the solution uh, you did, you try to do by yourself. You can take a look, but sometimes that don't help you uh, it's interesting to, to try to resolve by yourself and give the explanation how you get the solution. Okay, okay, thanks. And about okay. the theoretical part, do we need to put references as well? Yeah, if you, if you, if you take a look for other links or other web pages or books, whatever, yeah, it will be interesting to put the references or this uh, document you read. But uh, do we have just to um, put it in the in the end, or do we have to uh, um, put it as citation? <laughs> you see, that citation will be perfect. It not will be perfect if you write a citation. Yeah. 
is not, don't think about uh, like uh, a scientific document. Try, try, try to be clear with your explanation. Uh, do you think is is if you can if you want to put a citation, but you think it's inter interesting, but it's not necessary to be like a like a, a scientific paper like and any citation. You can do something more. Not uh, not a, in this a scientific way. I don't know if you are used to this document with citations. Okay, my so my student in the in the Spanish student would they don't ask this type of question usually. It's good. Okay, so basically we just have to put the citation if we want to stress some author's opinion or something like that. But else. It's fine yeah. if we just put the, the source in the uh, yeah the references. Yeah, yeah. If you put something like a copy exactly one part, this would be good if you put a citation. Uh, but if you are explaining, you take ideas, you are not using exactly the same phrase, you copy the phrase. If you copy the phrase, you need to put the citation. If you want to put this exactly the same phrase, if not, it should. It depends. You don't need to put a citation or, or just, okay. I, the idea I read it in this, in this um, web page or book or whatever. Okay. And one more question: Do we send? the final uh, documents via email or do we upload it in Moodle or? Yeah, I, I'm going to open a task in Moodle. You can upload there. It will be more easy to, to collect every, every, every work in this task. I'm going to create now, okay, for this. Okay, for thank the, you. For this go, okay. So this is this is our last lecture, yes, and we just need to submit our works now. Uh, yeah. Not sure, no, I think you have more, no? Uh, the semester finish, I think, is six. I have to take a look. Um, seven, probably, probably, yeah, probably, yes. Yes, probably this, this is our last lecture, yeah. I'm sure, but I have to check. Um, let me one second. I'm gonna check with you. And now here yeah, you can you can see where fine calendar. Okay. Yeah. Oops, here. In web grades, semester finish. Uh, Thirty one July. until 11 of June. So we have next Monday. Sorry. Yes, we have next Monday class. Last, uh, next day is the last one. Do, do, do you have the same information or not? Or do, do you have another information? Do you have the same information that, that semester finished the uh, 11th of June or not? Uh, I didn't know it all, so it sounds, it sounds right, but I don't know. 
uh, here is clear. It's uh, finished the 11th of June. So we have also next day, the um, uh, next week is our last, uh, last session. We can resolve, try to resolve questions or do also another exercise with uh, this idea of Marcus Triska. Okay, we have no, another session more next week. Okay, next Monday. More questions? Yes, no. Are you happy with the, today's classroom or not? For me, it's like very interesting because I, I tried before to resolve Sudokus with this, uh, without using this restriction or library, uh, CLP, it was very, very hard. And with this idea, the solution is, is much, much easy and simple and fast. So I'm so happy with the, this idea to implement this uh, solution with uh, restrictions. A clever and simple and fast way to obtain solutions, okay? Perfect. If you don't have more questions, see you next, uh, next week, okay? Yes, thank you okay. so much. You're welcome, you're welcome. Have a nice week. See you, you next too. day. Bye. 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 Bye.